Francis Ngannou versus Jorginho Rosenstroik expected to headline UFC Columbus, bro. Oh my God! Someone's going. Someone to sleep. is going. Hey, it's not him. Somebody is going it's not to him. the hospital, and it's probably Rosenstroik. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the MMA Brothers Podcast, the newest, baddest, and best podcast out there. And uh, let's get it going. Hello guys, welcome back to the MMA Brothers Podcast. My name is Daryl. This is Asher over here. And uh, we're going to do the weekly fight news, just a weekly roundup of the news that's coming to the MMA world. We're going to start off with Tyron Woodley versus Leon Edwards, followed by Robert Whitaker versus Jared Kennanier. Nir Sahuda has been stripped of his title. Jocker returns to light heavyweight. And uh, <clears throat> Ngannou versus uh, Rosenstruck. So we're going to start off with Woodley versus Leon Edwards' is booked for UFC London main event on March 21st. So it looks like Tyron was playing some games because Tyron had gone on social media and he's like, I'm not fighting in England. Like he, I'm the, you know, five time, you know, defending champ or six time. He wants to fight me. He can come to the States. And that kind of made him look like a, like a softie, in my opinion. You should be able to fight anyone wherever, wherever, no matter what circumstance, mm-hmm. if you truly are a champion. Yeah. So <clears throat> going to be an interesting fight. Woodley has the wrestling advantage. Edwards has the advantage on the feet, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Woodley imposes his will there because he's coming off of a very, very poor performance mm-hmm. against uh, Kamaru Usman. Or you could look at it as Kamaru having a very good performance. But anyways. Yeah, so for me, like, um, Woodley is obviously the former champion. And even though um, he just lost to Usman, and you know what's funny? I didn't think Usman was that good until, like, when he fought Woodley, I thought Woodley was just sleeping. I'm like, bro, like, how are you going to get bodied like that by Usman? But then when he fought, when he fought Kobe Covington, and I realized how good Usman was, I was just like, bro, this guy is really good, right? Yeah, he has no so, holes in his game. I know. Like, he's nice on the feet, nice takedown. You can't take him down. Like He, he has 100% really, takedown. He's never defense. been taken down before. And so now Tyron Woodley, he's going to try and go back for a title shot. If he beats Edwards, who's actually on a current on an eight-fight win streak. Um, and Leon Edwards is pretty good. He's very tall. I think he's like, what, 6'1 six, six or around there or something? And Woodley's like 5'9". And nine. Woodley's like 5'9". But so, he's got power. But Woodley's got that one-shot KO power in his right hand. So this is going to be a very, very interesting fight. It's UFC London, I think, in March. And um, I expect Darren Till to be on this card. I don't think this is going to be the main event. They're probably going to put Till up against some middleweight. Um, he's not going to be fighting Robert Whitaker because that's our next topic. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So you have some I think Till will buy this time. I don't think he wants Romero because yeah. Romero's his only other. He said he doesn't want Romero. <laughs> who who would? Like, no who one would? wants Romero except um, Adesanya. Adesanya <laughs> wants Romero. I, I, don't put this past the UFC to book Adesanya versus Till. If I was Till, I wouldn't take that fight because it's much. It's better if you lose before you get to the champ than in the championship because that would be two losses. In title fights, you know, mm-hmm. within very relatively quick succession, mm-hmm. I think he needs to get used to the weight class, body some guys, you know, and then like if he gets one more marquee win, then give him the title shot. Mm-hmm. But until I think you should book Adesanya, Romero, winner of that, or the loser of that till fight, and then he goes to to the championship. Yeah, I think he needs at least one more fight in middleweight before he fights for the title. But we're gonna move on to the next one. So the next one we have on the list, like we were talking about earlier. We have Robert Riddicker, and he's facing the killer gorilla Jared Cannonier at UFC 248. Now, it just doesn't get any easier for Robert Riddicker, does it? <laughs> the you're Reaper gonna go, is just being reap, bro. <laughs> you're going to go from Adesanya to Whitaker, uh, from Adesanya to Cannonier. That's, a, that's two very different stylistic matchups, but Jared, yo, he hits and kicks hard. I remember seeing Jared. I watched Jared versus the Spider, bro. Holy, he, he messed up his leg with just one leg. Yeah. He was throwing leg kicks throughout the fight. Knee. No, he didn't snap. Whoa, you know, he hurt yeah. his knee bad. Yeah. Just throwing leg kicks the whole time because he knew Anderson's power. Uh, Anderson's strong suits his movement, right? He's always moving. He's bobbing. He's weaving. He's throwing yeah. kicks, front kicks. So Jared was like, I'm going to take out that leg and see what you do. Yeah. Same thing is probably going to happen. To, to Whitaker, because Whitaker likes to stay, hold, and then explode, right? Yeah, but you yeah. can't explode off that leg if it's been chewed up, right? Yeah. So, I'm expecting Kenny Nier to come out with the win here, just because he has a lot of steam, and he's just so composed. It's scary. Mm. Yeah. It's actually I, frightening. Don't forget, Jerry Kenny is coming from heavyweight down yes. to, to middleweight. So, this guy has a lot of power. And, like, the way he messed up, what's his name? Hermanson or whatever? Jack like, Hermanson. Yeah, Jack Hermanson last fight. Hermanson was like, bro, I thought I was the best middleweight in the world. 
I faced Jared Cannonier. I was like, bro, there's levels to this. That's literally his words. Like, I gotta go back and train harder. And then after we win, the guy just yeah, Killer Green is just like, bro, I want more, bro. So yeah, this and he is... never gets injured after his fights. He's always clean. I'm like, yo, how? <laughs> so this is gonna be a tough one for Rob. But again, he's only taking one L in a middleweight, which is to the champion right now. I Saturday. think Romero beat him. But anyways, yeah. So this topic for discussion. I think well, let's well let's see who we think is gonna win. I think Cannonier is gonna win mm-hmm. because I think Rob has taken too much damage to his chin. He got dropped by Romero two or three times. Adesanya dropped him twice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's only so much your chin can take, and then you're gonna face a guy who hits as hard as Jared Cannonier. Look at that right here. It says Cannonier has a hundred percent finishing rate with knockouts against David Branch, former champion Edison Silva, and recently Jack Hermanson. No so, opponent in middleweight has made it to the third round. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yeah, so Killer Girl is nothing to mess with. And, he uh, looks like he's chiseled from stone. Like yeah. he legit, he's like Romero, not as buff as Romero, but he's definitely very cut and he brings the heat. But who Robert Whitaker, who do you have? I think this one, um, I'm going with Robert Whitaker. Just because of the people that Robert, Robert Whitaker has gone through, like he's had way, way tougher tests. Than Jared Carney has at one eighty. Not necessarily, man. He's fought Romero twice. Yeah, but Romero is just as explosive as him, right? And he and I think he lost to Romero. He's beat Jacare. He's beat uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Brunson, Dirk Brunson. He meant Brunson. <laughs> every beat Brunson. <laughs> he's beat bare people. I'm going with uh, Whitaker. He took it out against Asanya. So it was really good. Asanya would beat Kenanier too. No, he's just that. Yeah, he would. He wouldn't yeah. piece him up the way he pieced up. Because Kenny Nier is actually calculated, bro. All Rob was doing is blitzing him. Anyway, just keep going. Alright, we'll move on to the next one. So the next one here, we got Daryl's favorite fighter. <laughs> Yo, someone <laughs> knock out Cejudo. Please. <laughs> Go. So, yeah. Uh, Daryl's boy, Henry Cejudo, he's uh, relinquishing his UFC flyweight belt. I wouldn't say relinquishing. They probably took it away from him. It's not yeah, like he, he was just spun it because yeah. he's a freaking dude. <laughs> Hate him. So Joseph Benavides, this is at the 125 on. division, not the 135 division. So he's going to be fighting for the title against some guy. I don't know who that guy is, to be honest. De- Deverison? Federico? Federico? Davison Figueredo. Yeah, I've never yeah. heard of him, to be honest, but whatever. Yeah, I've never... The, the lower and lower the weight classes get the harder and harder it is for me to get into the fight because everyone, they, they almost never knock each other out because mm-hmm. they, they don't have power at that weight class. But they're fast. They're fast. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It depends what you're into. I'm more so into getting clipped and you heavyweights. Like the power more. I, I, like, I like heavyweight fighters. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really think Sahudo needs to get his butt kicked, but that's mm-hmm. beside the point. I'm very happy they stripped him. So he's no longer the triple C. He's the double C now. <laughs> and then when he loses again, he'll just be the singular C. And I hope they strip him of his Olympic medal too. So, <laughs> can't take so, that so he can shut up. I hope he gets busted for PEDs or something. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's no longer the champion of this weight division of this weight class. People, he keeps on saying he saved the weight class, make flyweight great again, whatever, some stupid MAGA um, stuff. That's why I even don't like him even more. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be a good fight. Benavidez is good. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be an interesting matchup. I think Hosoda said he wants to fight Jose Aldo next, which is going to be very interesting. But yeah. I don't think Jose is going to be able to stop the takedowns, man. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. I think it's going to be a very easy fight for Cejudo, in yeah. my opinion. Because it's not like Jose is coming in and throwing heat. Like, yeah. he cracked Marlon. Marlon didn't even get wobbled once. Well, Jose has nice head power in his hands, though. Yes, but he's, like, he's diminishing himself to... I know what you mean. He's not as strong as he would be at And then, and then Cejudo is very efficient at 135, mm-hmm. where he's going to just keep shooting for Tatum. What's, what's Aldo going to do? Yeah. Right? He's going to leg kick. He could leg kick him because he's thunderous leg kicks. But stand up, Aldo's beating him. But mm-hmm. Cejudo's not going to let it be stand up. He's an Olympic level wrestler, right? So. Yeah, because Marlon was beating him up on the feet. So, yeah, his stand up's not that good. Yeah. Freaking TJ Dillashaw has got glass chin. And <laughs> he jumps at 125. Yeah, 125. yeah but uh, Benavides, like Daryl said, he's a really good fighter. Um, I'm sure he's going to win the title fight whenever they fight. Maybe this guy is really, really good, but that's that's besides the point. The main... No, but Dillashaw dropped to 135. No? No, Dillashaw was a 135 champ and he went down to 125 to Oh, true, yeah. So that's yeah. the last time Cejudo fought. And mm-hmm. it's almost a year since he fought that weight class. So the UFC is off him. Like, yo, you gotta, we got the division's gotta move on. So we're gonna move on to the next one. And the next one we got here is the boy Jacare, the crocodile. <laughs> He's moving back down to. Not really lame, by the way. <laughs> 
Well, it's not nothing. me being lame. That's what he actually does. Because yeah, he's a lame guy. <laughs> Jack Curry returns to middleweight. So you... Oh, he, that's he, my bad in the yeah. beginning. I said he returns to light heavyweight. He's going back to middleweight. Yeah. For your right hole. I don't know why. Why? Was the power too much at light heavyweight? He, like, couldn't, he couldn't handle your block bro. He's like, yo, block is too good, bro. I can't fight this weak class. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he just brought... I don't just don't think he had enough power. And he, I think he felt like the strength difference in guys. Because if you go up a, a weight class, mm-hmm. most of the time, you're smaller size for that weight class. Mm-hmm. Like, Darren Till's a big 185. Yeah. He's also a big one seven. That's different. Yeah. He's not a big two or five. Yeah, when I saw him in the octagon, he looks slim. Like, he, he looks, he looks slim. small. Yeah, yeah. It looks kind of small. Yeah, can be fighting Jones with his Luke build. Rocco looked big enough at two or five. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a time for another. That's a discussion for another time. He's mm-hmm. he's a disgusting MMA fighter. He's so good at everything, but he's just a prick. Mm-hmm. And he leaves his chin up because he's cocky. Yeah, he keeps just, getting tagged. Yeah, always gets hit in the chin. It's like, fam, do something about that. But I think Uriah Hall, lots of experience. He's gonna bring. The power, um, Jacare has power. I'm not saying he doesn't, but I think the on the field it's not a competition. Right, Hall's nice. That's what I'm saying. But he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, so, so he could take him down and submit him. So, so I think fight stays on the feet. <clears throat> Hall gets it. Jacare is gonna get it if uh, it's on the ground. So I'm gonna go through Ryan Hall. I'm gonna go with Jacare because I don't think Uriah Hall's takedown defense is that good. And just one more point I want to say about this thing. So there's been a trend of all these middleweights going up to light heavyweight. Um, what's his name? So Jacare did it. Luke Rocco did it. Chris Weidman did it. All three of those guys took L's. Um, Thiago Santos and Anthony Smith, they went up. And I think they won three straight fights. So then these other fighters probably thought like, yo, like that's the move. That's like 20 pounds. Yo, that's yeah. 20 pounds. Yo, Nacho, the guys who fight at 205 weigh like 230. Like they're yeah. 240. They're cutting down. Yeah. Right? You're the one who w- walks around at like 215. Mm-hmm. Right? So, so yeah. That's not, it's not the wave, man. So, this fight is actually going to be on the Khabib Tony Ferguson card. So, that card's looking pretty nice so far. I don't know why they keep booking it in Brooklyn. <laughs> so, the final topic for this podcast today is Francis Ngannou versus. Jargino Rosenstroik expected to headline UFC Columbus, bro. Oh my God! Someone's going. Someone to is going. Hey, it's not him. Somebody is going it's not to him. the hospital, and it's probably Rosenstroik. <laughs> so now, now listen, guys. Listen, listen. Like I get it. You want to be the guy that knocks out Ngannou because Ngannou is a scary guy. Ngannou, his gas tank was at. 20%, 15% is bad as 15 mm-hmm. And Stipe cracked him. Boom! Mm-hmm. And he's just like, all right, mm-hmm. let's go. You want to throw one again? Yeah. And then I was like, yo! Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going to... Like, I I feel bad for Rosenstruck because every heavyweight will tell you, they mm-hmm. don't want to fight in Ghana. Of course. You see what he... He takes one. Look, Rosenstruck couldn't piece, he couldn't get Alistair out of there into the fifth round. Mm-hmm. And Ghana did it in the first round. Yeah. Within like 30 seconds, I think, yeah. wasn't it? I think his last three fights is one of the first round. JDS, um, what's that guy's name? Curtis Blades. JDS, Curtis and, Blades, and, and the, 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 Alistair, guy. too. Um, who else? He, those only losses to Steve Bay and oh, to Derek. Velasquez. Yeah, he yeah, took out King Velasquez in the third round, too. Three straight uh, first round finishes. And this was off him being too cocky, then he got stopped, and then. And then that didn't stop. He lost. And then he lost again. And then mm-hmm. now he's back into it. He's the scariest UFC fighter ever. Let's just hope it's not a uh, black man. Not advertising. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no sponsors yet. All right. Shut up. <laughs> so, Rosenstruck had a very lucky win in his last fight. Very lucky. He lost that fight until he, in the last 10 seconds. But yeah. He was losing. Every judge had him losing. There's, yeah. there's, there's, no, there's no contest. Mm-hmm. He thinks because he's got some steam behind him. He KO'd uh, what's his the guy with the, with the uh, tissue paper, wet tissue paper chin. Andre Arlovsky. Yes, yeah, Arlovsky. KO'd Arlovsky. Um, KO T T KO'd over him. Mm. Best. That one actually some referees will let it go. I don't know if we had a discussion about this. Yes, but yo, he was walking. Uh, he was he was up on his feet and Rosenstreich was walking the other way. And there was like six seconds left in the fight. Yes, he goes straight and run back. To put it in perspective, he got clipped and he went down. And his mm-hmm. hands were like this yeah. by his side. So do you want Rosenstruck to come in and then hit him? No, and, then, and then the ref does it. strike was on the other side of the octagon. Yes, because he walked away. Up. Bear in mind, Overeem walked the wrong way. Like over, oh, Rosenstruck was over there. Overeem went this way. 
So, but like he was a little bit wobbly on the legs, but the referee stopped him. Maybe he saw the cut. He's like, whoa. No, no, no. It wasn't even that he saw the cut, bro. When he dropped, like you could see he wasn't there. But the referee did not stop it there. He got up to his feet. Then he walked up to him. Then he's like, oh, okay, no, it's over. Yes, because Rosenstruck walked away. I hate when fighters do that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. When the referee has not said, yo, it's over, and yeah. then you walk away, yeah. that's being a little bit of a douchebag. But if you look at Alistair, mm-hmm. right? If he got dropped and oh, Rosenstruck came in and then fed him. Do you remember when what Romero did to Rockhold? He dropped him. Yeah. Then he and, then he, and then Rockhold. But Rockhold didn't get up to his feet. Stop. He, he, listen. Rockhold got cracked and he's on the fence. Yeah. Same way yeah. thing was, and then he came in and he broke his jaw. Yeah. What? What? Why make him come in and break his jaw? Because if Rosen Rosenstruck didn't hit him from across the cage, that's what I'm saying. The scenario he leaped, he leaping clipped him, mm-hmm. and he saw he went down. Mm-hmm. And Rosenstruck said, "All right, there's no need mm-hmm. for me to follow up." Because if he goes and does a follow, you're telling me right now he wouldn't have closed the distance. But you can't make, as a referee, you can't make a decision just because that guy walked away. Then the fight's over. Is what I'm trying to say. As a referee, your best interest is to protect the fighter. Safety, yeah. Right? Yeah. Some guy just got dropped, mm-hmm. right? And his hands are down, mm-hmm. like this on the cage. Yeah. And right? He stands up. And then he didn't stand up. Like, he didn't go down. He, he went down up. like this. Then, and then the second, he's like, okay, I'm going to get up. So, like, he was just chilling there. Like, okay, yes. Yeah. And then when he came up. Then he came up. He was like a little wobbly. I agree. Yes. So, yeah. then why make him go through the. the what I'm saying is. The why I'm saying that is because Rosen, Rosenstrain is on the other side of the octagon. Overeem's on his feet. And there's six seconds left in the fight. Yes. Which Overeem's winning? Yes. But you get, from, you from, the, from the that scenario, standpoint, yeah. you're making it seem. Like the guy didn't have his lip busted open and he got that's, tagged, I, I, okay. slightly got I'm tagged. I'm saying I see both sides. That's what I'm saying. I can see why the referee stopped it and I can also see why most people would be cheesed. That it was- I don't need to see fighters get hit as soon as, like, when you get knocked down and you're, and, listen, if he got knocked down, went on his back and then turtled like this, mm-hmm. he's clearly still there mm-hmm. because he, he's expecting the strike to come. Mm-hmm. If you get dropped and your hands go, and you just have your hands beside your back, like mm-hmm. this, Colby Covington, for example, mm-hmm. got dropped, mm-hmm. right? Had his hands up, but he, within he was, be, he was even falling. before, yeah. even before, no, the first time he got dropped, oh, yeah. even when when the moment Usman dropped him, Usman was coming. Colby got right up. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, Alistair got dropped. Mm-hmm. Rosenstruck walked away, and Alistair still t- it took him two, three seconds because he got dropped with nine seconds left, and he got up at the five second mark, right? Okay. The, Sure. So, yeah. you guys can go back and watch it. Got dropped around the 9 second mark, got up around the 5 second mark. There's 5, 6 seconds left. In those 3 seconds, right, Rosenstrike walked away. He's like, bro, I don't need to go in and hit him again. All that's We good. both agree that Rosenstrike, if he didn't walk away, no no discussion. He would win. Perfect. Well, anyways, we can argue about this all day. But that's our final topic for the night, I believe. I don't think we have anything else on the agenda. What do you guys think of um, the five topics? You can like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We're going to do another fight week podcast just like this next week because the... There's no card until the 28th, right? The the 18th of January. So the 18th of January is when the next pay-per-view is happening or the next UFC event. So stay tuned for more UFC fight news. And I want to hear you guys' opinion on our argument because I truly don't think a guy should receive an extra shot on the ground when you can clearly tell he's not there. We, that, I'm that, not saying he should. No, no, I'm, we're not rehashing. Yeah. I'm just saying I want to hear their opinions. Yeah. Hear so, their guys, opinions. thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, as he just said. And we'd love to hear from you guys. You guys follow us on Instagram, MMA Brothers Pod. MMA Brothers Pod. And then listen to our podcast as well on all streaming platforms. Same title. I hate Asher. <laughs> all right. See you, dudes. Thanks for watching. Peace. Ha, 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 ha.